Good evening. This is our new episode of Conscious Gatherers, and tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, Terry Palma, who usually starts with our podcast, uh, is not uh, able to be with us tonight. Um, so it's just me and our special guest, uh, Royce, uh, A.J. Royce. A little bit about A.J. Royce uh, and what we're going to talk about tonight. And probably and that can go in lots of directions. But it's, uh, we're calling this Operating from a Sense of Center. And Royce explains that when one is centered, the extremes fade away, making it easier to identify what's going on around you without getting caught up in the energies of it. Very important what's going on right now. Royce considers herself to be a systematic observer and experiencer of life. She has said many times that any speaker, if they are consciously observing what is taking place during a presentation, will be the one who ends up learning the most. She has personally experienced this more times than she can count, and I know that for a fact. (laughs) Only speaking from her heart about those things which she has experienced herself, Royce is perceived as being authentic. I'm not sure if perceives the quiet word, but she's very authentic. Uh, (laughs) uh, Royce's scientific and humanitarian interests have led her to become certified in several different types of energy therapies, including a master's degree in Reiki, as well as being an ordained minister. Under the name A.J. Royce, she has authored two books, one entitled When the Night Comes Creeping, which is an account of her own spiritual awakening, and the other entitled Walking into the Eye of God, which explores sacred geometry. Recently, Royce has channeled her geometry skills into a unique form of visual and tangible art. Her hobbies are singing, focused more on opera than any other genre, and working on sacred geometry in whichever form it may take. And from a personal um, uh, relationship I have with Royce, I've known her for 20-some years and have noticed incredible things that have come to um, both of us along with other people. And um, it's uh, just to see the road and the path that has... uh, gone on for these, this many years and where we are now, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to t- turn the uh, uh, conversation over to Royce and uh, let her tell you a little bit more about herself, um, perhaps a little bit about her story and uh, in, in how she got to where she's at today, and uh, then uh, more on uh, being in your center. So. Um, introducing Royce, and here we go. Thank you, Beverly, and what a joy it is to be here. You know, this is my very first podcast. It's very exciting for me, and I miss you, Terry, and I love you. So I'll get on with it. I would like for any of you listening to... Uh, If you want to be able to visualize what I'm speaking of, because I'll be making reference to a diagram, I'd like for you to get a a little piece of paper with uh, something to write with, a pen or a pencil. And like Bev said, this talk is entitled Operating from a Sense of Center. Um, I have a background in engineering, which... Uh, I got into quite unusually. (laughs) I I was prodded into it. It's not really a a decision I thought I was making myself, but it ended up serving me more than I could tell you. Um, I was not trained in any kind of engineering. Uh, I did begin a drafting class, and I was in it two weeks and then was informed that I was starting to work at an engineering firm the next Monday, (laughs) and that was a shock to me. So that's that's kind of how I got into engineering, uh, feet first and um, just flying by the seat of my pants. But you know what? It turned out to be the thing that I was gifted at. (laughs) And so that's just simply how the universe universe works, you know? Well, 
I'm going to mm-hmm. jump in here because I, I know the story. And actually, this is all told in her, her, her book, When the Night Comes Creeping. And that's a wonderful book. It really will open um, uh, everyone's eyes to even things that are going on in their life uh, because Royce is so beautifully um, talked about many of her experiences. She has a lot more. <laughs> and, um, and then how that, uh, how what wakened within her uh, because of those experiences. So talking about the engineering, um, you went well beyond a basic drafts person. Yes, yes, I did. Over a, a length of time, I, I uh, worked my way up to second level uh, electrical designer. And, um, you know, it's... <sighs> I don't know what to say about that. It just unfolded, and I was there with it and enjoyed it immensely. Well, okay, I'm going to break in again. Um, you know, what I feel is what happened with Royce, and I, she can attest to this, of course, and that is something inside her already knew. Yes. The electrical designs that that were, that she mentioned that, there are a lot of huge projects or, or some of the more complicated ones, and she was fine with it. It was easier than the simple project. Yes, yes. I, my understanding was more in the heavy-duty stuff, like large motor control centers and stuff for, for plants than, like, say, house wiring. I had no interest in house wiring. But, but the big stuff... I, I really loved it. <laughs> so it's you know it's all within, and so you can tell how our our, our consciousness operates. And last mm-hmm. week I had talked about connecting the dots and and our projection of consciousness and our different aspects aspects of self. And so you know we're tapping into all of these, and it's pretty obvious with what's happening with Royce that she was tapping into some really some uh, what do you want to call a, it a very deep and expansive part of myself that I did not realize was there. Yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead, please. And I find it interesting, the thing about connecting the dots with your last program, because I make use of the dot with this talk. Um, because of my love of sacred geometry, I use sacred geometry to see and understand the world. Now, you may not be familiar with the term sacred geometry, and it's exactly what you would think it to be. It is a geometry that has spiritual thought applied to it, and they both support each other. You get a, a larger and more expansive sense than either one by themselves. So I really, really love sacred geometry. Okay, to help you see and understand what I have to say, I'd like for you to make a very simple, simple drawing. Make a dot on your little piece of paper and surround that dot with a circle, say around a quarter size or so. Now, that dot is the center. It will always be the center. It is, even though it looks like a black dot on a white sheet of paper, I'm referring to this this dot as pure light. We focus on that light, and it opens and reveals itself to us, and we see the circle. It's It's like uh, making a boundary for something that's really too expansive to lock down. So just for illustration's sake, we're, we're making it into something we can wrap our thoughts around. So how do we make this dot and circle relevant to our lives? The dot can be the center of anything, anything we focus upon. It can be the sun in the center of our solar system, but more importantly, I see it as the light in the center of each one of us, surrounded, encased by life, our body, our surroundings, our lives, our families, and all the rest. So what do we do with all this life? 
I want you to draw another circle, if you will, just a plain circle with no dot in it. And now I'd like for you to draw a line through that circle from one edge of the circle to the other. That line connects one side of the circle to the other, illustrating something really unusual. It's, it's focusing on extremes. And why would that be? It focuses on the extremes because there's no center. There's no dot. So you look to the right side of that line and you see that barricade, that, that edge of the circle. You look to the left and you see another barricade, another extreme. But now when you put the dot back in the center of the circle, in the center of that line, now the line connects complementary sides of the circle. Those of you who may be working with a color wheel are very well aware of what I'm talking with, the complementary colors. Now, if we apply this complementary measure to, to our lives, keeping our focus on the light which resides at our center, at the very heart of ourselves, the extremes are no longer that important to us. They have no dominion over us, no power over us. We just know that they're there. So the acknowledgement of the center and being mindful of it continually allows us to remain aware, aware of everything around us, but we remain even keeled calm. It's easy these days to get caught up in the reaction to what we might see around us, all the extremes being acted out. But when we get caught up in all of that, that lets us know that we have stepped out of the center of ourselves. I know this because I've done it so many times. I could not give you a number high enough. So I'm learning how to be calm. And I'm using this illustration of the circle and the dot and the, the knowledge of the extremes to help to shift my perspective so that I see what's real as opposed to what is simply a reaction. The circle is there for us to make use of and not the other way around. Life is there for us to enjoy and interact with and sometimes just to observe and learn from. The center of the circle remains the center. We can always count on that. The circle follows the dot. And that's, that's my way of seeing the world. We hold ourselves in the center and we're not so reactive. I see this so appropriate uh, for today. And we're seeing extremes being played out or so-called extremes. We, and, uh, you know, Terry and I have called this programs, and many of those old programs mm -hmm. are shutting down. And so as we observe ourselves in these old programs, then we don't react to them. Yeah. And uh, it's like, okay, these are playing themselves out. And I definitely feel that's what's going on on Earth right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're all going to be fine. I think everything's going to be wonderful once we get through this phase. Yes, when, if we can stay centered in ourselves, mm -hmm. we can see what's going on around us, but we don't have to jump in there with it. Mm -hmm. We can learn from it right? a lot. 
we mostly what not to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that could but, be. It's like, yeah, this is this is not. Well, we find out what works and doesn't work because right. then we know we've moved from the the right or the left. I, I put my line in the middle of my circle from left to right, or right to left depends if you're whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that means anything. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, yeah, and it's like okay, and you find yourself being more centered, and your I mean your whole body feels different when you do that. Yes. Yeah, and and that you're not so anxious or stressed and all those things that are going through you. Um, is there any, do you have any comment on um, people that, because this is bringing up what's, what's going on today and, and if they're not centered, and it brings up other things, ancestral things or uh, old hurts, old pains or whatever it may be, be it um, mental, physical, um, spiritual, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. So... Um, do you have any comment on that? Well, I see it a way as as uh, diffusing the the reaction. Okay. Um, you know, we can we can look back over our past and we can get stuck there. That means that we're on that line. We're looking to the right or to the far right or to the far left. You mm-hmm. know, we are we are stuck out of the center. Okay. So yeah. that means that we're not living in the moment you have to bring yourself back to now and that is where the center is okay now terry has talked about um uh some exercises that you can do in order to bring that um uh, bring your yourself into your heart space and um, i'm wondering if you have any uh royce do you have anything that you can say about that that anything um that you utilize to get yourself back in that center if you feel like you're pulled left or right or whatever it is, up, down, doesn't matter. Well, since I am so into the geometry, this diagram helps me. That's why I had everybody to put it down on paper because, you know, we are a very visual society. Just hearing the words doesn't quite cut it when you're talking about a diagram, but when you see it, you can connect with it. And to see that that circle has a center and that is the ideal placement for our consciousness and we expand out from that that means that it doesn't mean that we get locked in any one place but we expand outward you know the extremes are there if you're looking at from the lines point of view but it's not really extremes it's it's one whole complementary thing the entire circle complements yeah. itself it, what, what comes to uh, mind as you say that is that it, you can look at that dot you know the dot within the circle and you're that dot and it's like, and it's i i even look at at it as like the eye into you which is you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's all you it's like it, you know, I can see myself going through that dot and then, you know, create whatever I want to create. So it's your consciousness going through the dot. Yes. And so that can be a, in a biological or physical thing mm-hmm. or not. Yes, it relates to most anything that you could think up to relate to it. It's a, it's a wonderful tool, but it is us. Yes, definitely. And, you know, the, uh, the circle, I mean, the dot with the circle around it is a known symbol for the sun, and there are lots of different schools of thought, spiritual thought, that um, there's there's great significance placed on the sun. And there, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. We hear that all the time. It's everything right there. There's no under. <laughs> That's right. There's no under. There's no above. It's just all right there. The dot can be seen as. Uh, the the simplest way of seeing all that is. It's just compacted so that we can wrap our minds around it. Very interesting. And it's it's a wonderful visual tool that we can use to help center ourselves. It's just visualizing that dot within the circle. And it pulls that back and it pulls us into the heart space as I see it. That's right. That's right. And as I said on this podcast many times, I'm, I'm very visual. So... It helps me as a visual person to to look at that. And then your consciousness can go wherever you desire it to go. That's right. Make use of the circle. Make use of all of it. 
all of it from the center. Got it. Thank you. Uh, at this point, um, I thought we can open up the lines. If any uh, of you that are listening live um, will have a question, unmute yourself right now and um, uh, in, have a question or a comment. We would appreciate that. And if not, that's okay. <laughs> it is. It is. All right. I, I'm not hearing anybody that wants to come on live. So, um, anyway, do you want to? We got a few more minutes here. Um, uh, you, you even mentioned the sun. So, um, if you, or is there anything else that you want to go into that any of your experiences um, that you would like to share uh, or talk about the sun since you just mentioned that? Well, the sun is a self generating form of energy it you know we we experience the energy that's given off by it the heat and the light we have that same type of mechanism within ourselves you know and i've made made it very oversimplified by calling it a dot but that generator is within each and every one of us and we can make use of that. Focus on that. Focus on what you can do. Go beyond your wildest dreams. Drop all your boundaries. Just do it. If you can think a thing, you can do a thing. Somebody said that. I, I don't know who to attribute it to, but it's very true. Um, so we have the sun within us. And you know, we talked about empowerment. Uh, I think every week I mention, you know, how powerful uh, a beings we are. And what you just said, we, if you want to look at it as a generator, mm-hmm. you know, our bodies are generating, or I can't say the word, generating. generating. <laughs> okay. and, um, and, and we put our focus in the body or through the body. Use, we're using our body. Obviously, we're not the body. We're much more than that. Uh, and and so what you're saying, what I hear you saying, that you know our body being this generator, if you want to use those terms, I mean that's powerful. I mean we're even more than a generator. I mean it's, yes, you know. yes, and and you know when when you're when you're focused on your center, that helps you to keep your thoughts out of like um, uh, our environment and any people or anything else robbing our energy. We've got an eternal source of energy that is right within us. But we've been taught just the opposite. We've been taught that, you know, we can we can be done in by all of these external things. And it's not true. But it's it's so easy to get wrapped up in that until you figure out that, wait a minute, something's not adding up here. Why is it that Sometimes when I'm focused in the right place, all these wonderful and miraculous things happen. And then other times it all falls flat. I get drained. You know, what? what is it? I've stepped out of my center. I've stepped out of that awareness of who and what I am. We are miraculous beings. And please, don't buy into the lies that you're not. It's a lie. The truth is we're beautiful and miraculous. And I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes looking at Beverly across the table because we know this. We are so beautiful. You are all so beautiful. And please, just keep your thoughts with that. Huh. Yeah, keep your thoughts with that, and, and then you're, you'll see your world change. The world changes, yes. And it can change just like that. That's right, because the thoughts are vibratory, and they have an effect on the environment. That's, that's why it can happen so instantaneously. We've talked about a new world, right? Okay, so... You know, what does that new world look like? And, you know, we think it's uh, God out there that's going to do it. Some people do. But it's really, it's us. 
And I know I've mentioned this in other podcasts, and it keeps coming up into my consciousness. We set this up. We set up those old programs to really know ourselves. And, you know, we've, and we you know, uh, forgot about who we truly are. And now we're coming into the focus of that centeredness of the generator of us, the, the full consciousness and the wonderful beings that we are, and even in our physicality here. So um, uh, just very interesting um, because Royce has explained it differently than we have in other episodes, but really it's the whole, uh, whole thing. We are so divine, you know, whatever that means to you. That's not in a religious sense. It just is. And, and uh, I, I was told uh, years ago, I think I wrote this in my book, said you are divine. You can be no less. That's I right. don't care who you are. That's right. And, you know, uh, looking at the biblical text, we were creating it, created in the image of God. Could That's we? what the biblical text says. How could we be anything less than divinity in motion being created by that magnificence, you know? It's, you can look at, at uh, God as being all out there beyond yourself, and that's right. But God is within yourself as well. There is no place where God is not because there's no place where you are not. It's all one. It's beautiful and one. <laughs> well, I hope you all are enjoying this because to me it's absolutely wonderful. Um, as we, ex- I used to call it, explore ourselves and really know ourselves, um, because this, this, we are the world. Now, they said, I mean, I heard it said, um, we're in the world. We're, what is it? We're in the world not of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, <laughs> I remember hearing, you are the world. <laughs> and um, it's like it, because otherwise I feel like that's separate no we are the world we're everything we're everywhere we're nowhere and now here <laughs> it's the same letters <laughs> so uh, you know it's a, it's a hard concept to, to understand but I think we're starting to understand it more and as, as uh, we continue living our lives and being more centered within ourselves and understanding that the true uh, love, if you want to call God love, I feel that's the same thing. Um, it's, we're understanding that's truly what we are. And each of us has our own focus, our own path, and that's wonderful because it's like, okay, we wouldn't want to all be the same. And, that's right. You know, that's right. You know, and it's like Royce can understand all this electrical stuff, and she sings absolutely beautiful opera, and I don't do any of that. So, <laughs> so. I don't sing very well, but that's okay. I like to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's just we all have our own focus and understand, you know, even if you're not, you know, don't feel that you're really good at any one thing. Yeah, you are in many ways. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to um, experience in your life. And it's just to understand, though, that you are this one beautiful creature that, that you have made yourself along with the whole of all. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. It's, um, if anybody has any questions or any comments, you can uh, unmute yourselves again. And uh, we've gone a little. Oh, we've gone almost to forty minutes. So um, I know it goes yeah. fast. It goes fast. But uh, uh, go ahead. I want to thank you so much. I have thoroughly enjoyed this, and and I appreciate and love all of you out there. <laughs> We're all in this together, as you've seen on many posters here of late. And and uh, I love you. Ah, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your being here, and um, and you all that are listening to, I believe, our seventeenth episode of Conscious Gatherers. Um, if anybody wants to reach us, uh, a question um, for Terry or myself, you can do that. Um, Terry gives you a phone number, and you know what? I don't know what that is offhand. So uh, I'll give you my email address, which is um, Beverly T, which is B E V E R L Y T 01 at gmail.com. 
Um, so you can reach me there, and if you do have a, a question for Terry too, I'll make sure that he does get it. Um, well, until uh, in two weeks from tonight, we'll be back on at seven o'clock, and um, uh, same number right now. We're, we're looking at doing a free conference call dot com, but doing it through the actual computer, and maybe we can post these on to uh, YouTube. But again, we've been looking at doing something a little bit different each time, but to, we haven't done that yet. So, uh, you know, hold on. We're still getting used to uh, this whole process of doing these podcasts. We thoroughly enjoy it, and, um, you know, we're to all wake up together. And this has all been called the Great Awakening. Indeed, that's what it is because we're waking up to who we truly are, and we're absolutely wonderful beings. So thank you all. I appreciate your being here with us tonight. Good night. Thank you.